Hello and welcome. Hi. How, how is uh, Wrexham Comic Con going for you? It's awesome. It's awesome. This is the first Comic Con I've ever done in Wales. So Ooh. have you done? Cool. Have you done many in the UK? Already? No, not not too many actually. <laughs> ah! oh, oh, just kidding. I have no idea what that was. Probably yeah. just someone saw me and they get nervous. They drop <laughs> things. Uh, yeah, I did a convention a long time ago at a mall in Milton Keynes. Oh yeah. And I had one day off at the end of the con, and I decided to use that day to take a long train ride to Port Marion, yeah. which is like, I think way south of Wales, like on the coast, and it was beautiful. It's where they filmed The Prisoner, and so yeah. I was really stoked to go there because I was a big Prisoner fan. So you, are you going to go visiting around like the UK now, or is it? No, I've been on a long tour of, of going from place to place to place to place this summer. Uh, Dragon Ball is just huge again, yeah. and uh, I've been having a lot of requests to go from here to there. So I don't stick around very long. Right after this con today, like in a few hours, I gotta I take a train back to uh, Heathrow. I'm gonna stay the night in that area and then head home early tomorrow morning. Yeah. Um, so you said that with the with Dragon Ball coming back, obviously Super has been hum, you know, huge as yes. well as Dragon Ball Z. I think it was like is it 18 years since or was it eight years or something? I can't remember the the, the difference between. Z I've been working. Super. I've been definitely working on the show for 18 years, but it's been around a long time. Z. Mm started airing uh, I guess around I think it was like 1994 in Japan mm. it was a, it's been going on a long long time and we started working on it in about 1998 99 and uh, it's been going ever since there hasn't been much new content until the past couple of years when we got the two new movies Battle of Gods mm. and Resurrection F and they were massive successes in the theater especially in the United States mm. they I think they they grossed over eight or nine million dollars just on an independent release which is really unusual mm. uh, it's probably the it's a it's a definitely a record breaking type of number we were up there with really giant franchises as far yeah. as uh, sales numbers are concerned mm, definitely. so it, it definitely means Dragon Ball's back oh yeah um, as soon as it came out over here in the cinemas in the UK I had to go see it straight away regardless of where it was I think it was like one place in Liverpool where it was like really far out it was like I don't care I want to go see it cause yeah it's, Fans were kind of nuts for it in the States. Oh, yeah. I'm hoping, like, obviously, if they make more films like that, they'll just come out over straight away because I just love it so much. Yeah, I, I love the fact that we got to dub Resurrection F so close to when it was released, mm. uh, practically simultaneously with the Japanese. So much so that the Japanese actually had their premiere of Resurrection F in the United States instead of Japan. They did their world premiere there. It's yeah. pretty cool to watch. So I was a bit, I, I thought it would have been over in Japan, but obviously when I came to America, I saw the behind the scenes, like the, the like questions as well as like the whole, Yeah. Like, it was amazing. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I was like, I really wish I was over there. Um, so with Super, are you excited to be voicing new, like new voice, uh, new lines for Vegeta? Yeah, it's, it, that's the best thing that's happened possibly. Like since the movies, the announcement of Super, uh, it was sort of the thing I kept wishing for when anyone would ask me at a convention, like, if you could make one wish to the dragon, what would it be? I always said, like, more Dragon Ball Z episodes, and I guess my wish came true. It just took a little while. Uh, I'm really excited to work with the cast again. I should be rounding everybody back up. I know that Sean Schemmel, voice of Goku, is going to be around. Uh, uh, Sonny Strait, the voice of Krillin. I mean, everybody that you recognize uh, from the original series. So with, um, with Super being quite big, do you think that oh, I'm trying to think um, with like the hindsight? Obviously, the first few arcs you're gonna be are you gonna be redoubling again because obviously they were taken from Resurrection F as well as Battle. Oh of the yeah, it's a, a different team did the the features. Mm. Uh, then it's a completely different animation team and a different director did the features. Uh, even though the story is similar for the first handful of episodes of of Super, it's told in a different way. Like for instance. Uh, I don't want to spoil this, but Vegeta's bingo song doesn't exist uh, in the in Super as it does in the movie. But something else uniquely funny happens. Like there's all these weird similarities. Like in in the movies, you never knew where Bulma's party was actually happening. Mm. But in the uh, but in the series, you find out that it's happening all on a cruise ship or something like that. It's really unique. Yeah, so I saw that when I watched the film, I was like, oh, it's just going to be the same arc again. It's just I was a little disappointed when I found out that some of the same material was going to be covered in Super. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I've come to watch it and start studying it, it's actually really great. Mm -hmm. And it develops, it starts to introducing new characters. 
and then it develops into something wholly unique and something completely awesome. Like you'll you'll love where it goes. Awesome. So when I obviously with Dragon Ball Z, you saw Vegeta being very kind of serious, and obviously when it came to the Bingo song, was it a kind of a different pace and difference and uh, difference from being serious to then being kind of jokey? Well, I think they're. I think that's the thing that makes Vegeta really funny when they put him this really contagiously angry guy, like always pissed off. They put him in these awkward situations. That's really fun for me. Like as a guy who's had to play Vegeta, who for the most part was kind of one dimensional, always angry, always angry, always angry. Uh, this really rounds his character out a lot. So much so that I'm, I really believe that Vegeta is hands down the best character in the series. He's had the best arc. Uh, he's had the best character growth because he chose to be a better person whereas Goku just fell on his head as a child and he basically has a head injury and that's the only reason he's a good character Vegeta's a pretty amazing guy yeah it's rich when we were talking about or when you were talking about in the thing where Vegeta's had all this growth and so it's like Piccolo has to, to, to a degree um, but combined with like Goku where it's just like it's fighting, eating, fighting, eating and yeah. that's it and obviously Piccolo's uh, much more of a, a better da dad than uh, Goku Piccolo's I, definitely a better dad yeah I, I never really kind of thought of that until like, you said it, I was like oh yeah and was, he's been just a nurturer ever since he ever since his inception in Z he, he essentially stole Gohan at the beginning of Z, trained him and kind of has taken care of him all along really looked out for Gohan and he still seems to, now he's looking after Gohan's children <laughs> It's just as it keeps progressing, it's just like, oh. So hopefully maybe when Pan has her children later on and Pic Pic Piccolo's still around, he can carry oh, on. Oh, I'm sure he'll be, be great grandpa Piccolo <laughs> as well. Uh, so when you've got like stuff like uh, Team Four Star, they've come along and they've yep. kind of taken Z and then now right. they're kind of working out. How, how did you find them and what did you think of them? Well, my, I, I was shocked when I first saw them because some of their impressions are bang on. Like the guy, uh, Lonnie Pator, he does uh, the voice of uh, Vegeta and Piccolo and Krillin, and his impersonations are hysterically good. Mm. Um, and they're, it's really funny. They clued into a lot of stuff that those of us who worked on the show found really funny, too. Uh, and we can relate a lot on that, because they, they definitely understood a lot of the stuff that we found interesting in the show. They've become so popular, in fact, that a lot of people really do ask about them. Some people ask me to quote stuff from their show, and I haven't seen all of it, and that's what—that's the only time it gets a little bit weird, because I'm like, I'm sorry, I wasn't involved with this show, but I know the line's Super Saiyan Swagger, I just haven't seen it in the series yet. So, uh, from what I read ages ago, they were acquired by Fun Animation. Will they be making accounts in Super as, like, cameos, or is this literally they can continue producing this content that they can do? What was that? Uh, Team Four Star? Yeah, I think they got I don't uh, think they were acquired by Funimation, actually. I read, I think it was, like, an article saying that Funimation were like, yeah, you're coming with us or something, or... I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think they were ever acquired. I don't think they've ever been an official part of Funimation, actually. Yeah. If anything, to be honest they can be a little bit of a problem for Toye, the parent company, mm. who, who doesn't necessarily like people taking their animation in any way. Japanese are very serious about that yeah. kind of stuff. So if anything, Funimation's been doing a pretty good job kind of keeping uh, Toye at bay and making sure they don't freak out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a rage. That's just somebody whistling at me. I knew it. So how did you get into voice acting? Uh, it's, I just sort of stumbled onto it. It's just one of those things that... Uh, Hey, stop it. Um, it's, it's one of those things that I just kind of stumbled into. I've always had a really deep voice. What is going on with that? Uh, I've always had a super deep voice. And uh, ever since I was, I guess I was like 12, 13 years old, suddenly my voice dropped. And everyone told me that I needed to become a voice actor. So eventually I did. Dragon Ball Z was pretty much my first like really like legitimate voice acting gig. Cool. So the kind of last question, because I know it's quite busy down there, is um, if you could give any sort of advice to anyone who wanted to start in the voice acting industry, what advice would you give them? Uh, well, my advice would mostly pertain to people who are from America uh, when it comes to really specific advice. But the general advice I give to people is that, you know, the industry has changed quite a bit over the years where it used to be, you know, if you had some talent, you you maybe found an agent and that agent helped you find work but these days agents don't want to really take you until you've done some sort of work which means it's really important to kind of hone your craft figure out what you're doing 
and create your own content because you have the ability I mean just like you do filming the show like you have the ability to kind of make what you want and do what you want to do like Team Four Star guys are a good example of that they wanted to make something creative they just made something and those are the people who are really kind of getting picked up and carried and celebrated these days are the people who are digging into themselves and creating their own content the best way to prepare to be a voice actor is really to learn to be an actor first so study theater, study uh, acting, work on film sets, get as close to you can uh, to the medium as, as possible. Because you might find out, uh, as I did, that like I don't think if I was just a voice actor, I would be happy. Uh, I love doing lots of different things. I like being a producer. I like being a director. I like being a, a composer. I like being a sound designer. Those are all the things that kind of uh, really help me enjoy doing what I do. And so my last bit of advice to anyone wanting to be a voice actor or any sort of actor is just to be diverse uh, because you just want to be able to tell people you can do anything. That's yeah. that's my that's my best guess. I like it. I've asked quite a lot of people like, the same sort of advice and it's, I think yours is uh, different to what other people have told me. So hopefully it can help people if they want to get into it. And Absolutely. Do it. So one, I, I know I said that's the last question, but uh, two last ones I have to start mm -hmm. off is when switching from producer, Piccolo, Yamcha, and you, you do right. quite a lot of voices, how easy is it to go from one to the other? Uh, I've been doing them so long; it's not too difficult. It can only it can only be difficult when I'm vocally stressed. Mm. If I've done a lot of screaming in in Vegeta's voice, it makes Piccolo's voice a little bit harder, and it makes Yamcha's voice almost impossible. I just have to really do the voices in the correct order. Like normally, I start any session, I'll do all the Yamcha lines first because he's really super simple, uh, and then I move to the usually the Vegeta second, and then Piccolo third. That's cool. And the last question for me is, if you could sum up Dragon, uh, the whole Dragon Ball franchise in three words, what would it be? Three words, the whole Dragon Ball franchise. Uh, over 9,000. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much for, for this interview. And uh, I hope to see you at more uh, UK cons. And I hope to come out some, some American ones as well. So, thank, thank you very, very much, much, man. Take care. Oh,